Despite what people might say, queerness has always been part of Hollywood. In this video series, we take a look at people and events that either shaped or were hidden from history. In this week's video, we journey all the way back to the early 1900s. David Manners was a Canadian-American actor, best known for his portrayal of John Harker in the 1931 Bela Lugosi horror film Dracula. I am Dracula. From a young age, he knew he was destined to be on the silver screen, and despite his father's objections, he moved from Canada to America somewhere in the early 1920s to pursue his dream of becoming an actor. He got discovered purely by accident while attending a Hollywood party and was cast as an uncredited extra in the 1929 film The Sky Hawk. He took on several smaller roles in the years that followed before being cast in his most famous role of John Hawker in the Dracula film. The film was a financial success and paved the way for Manners to work in Hollywood as a leading romantic man when it came to films. He most often portrayed a dashing man in a tuxedo, especially in romantic comedies. The fact that his acting career took off in 1929 and he also got married in that same year had a lot of insiders and historians speculate that his marriage to Suzanne Bushnell was an arranged marriage known as Lavender Marriages. Lavender marriages were implemented by Hollywood to keep gay bankable leading men in the closet. With the Hayes Code in full effect during the 30s, Hollywood studios couldn't afford a scandal about one of their leading men being a homosexual. Stars who were forced into lavender marriages included William Haynes who refused, Rock Hudson, and even Judy Garland. Back then, it was an attempt by Hollywood to straighten out gay actors who had the potential to become leading men. During his marriage to Bushnell, they hired a live-in servant, 22-year-old Antonio Damos, from the Philippines. Sorry, I frightened you, darling. It's after all better to be frightened than to be crushed. Whether or not Antonio was more than just a servant, and whether or not he had anything to do with Manus divorcing Bushnell in 1932, remains unknown. It was also around about this time that Manus got bored with Hollywood and decided to retire from acting. He went on record by stating that Hollywood was a false place, and that he never really fit in with the crowd. After leaving Hollywood, he concentrated more on his career in the theatre, which lasted for 17 years. In 1948, he met playwright Frederick William Mercer, and the two lived together as partners for 30 years until Mercer's death in 1978. This once dashing actor passed away in 1998 at the age of 98, and is mostly forgotten by modern audiences. But David Manor should never be forgotten. And that is why I decided to include him in this week's video. Mikkel, released in 1924, was renamed Michael for international release. The German silent film was directed by Carl Dreyer and starred the handsome actor Walter Sislek as the titular Mikkel. The two German films, Mikkel and Anders as al die Anner, also known as different from the others, which was released in 1919, are both films that are considered a landmark in gay cinema history. Especially in Germany, which made homosexuality a punishable offense under paragraph 175 of the German Criminal Code, which was enforced from May 1871 to March 1994. The fact that these two films even saw the light of day is a miracle in itself, especially in homophobic Germany from that era. The film Mikkel tells the story of a famous painter named Claude Zoret, who falls in love with one of his models, Mikkel, and they eventually become a couple. Without giving away too much of the plot, a love triangle developed between them and a bankrupt countess who try and seduce Zoret. Upon its release, critics didn't give the film good reviews, mostly due to the homosexual plotline. It was only after Dreyer established himself as a prominent director that critics re-evaluated the film Mikkel, praising the filmmaker's unique style, a style that would eventually inspire Alfred Hitchcock who used similar filming techniques. Hitchcock even used Mikkel as inspiration when writing the screenplay for 1925's The Blackguard. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I post new videos. I post videos every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. For a similar video to this one, click on this link.